The tender green rice seedlings are rolled up, which is frontline work that the farmers can omit when they plant fields. No machine can do it for you as one has to bend over yourself. These bundles of rice seedlings are all sent onto the conveyor belt for transport. Light rain in March makes this time for planting rice. This is a typical thing in the field during this season. The rice transplanter rumbles through the field with green rice seedlings nearly planting these paddy fields. In just a few moments, these fields are being planted. Farmers operating this machinery are able to identify the fact that this planting the field is different from other paddy fields. This rice is actually different than other rice used by other farmers. When we look closely at the ceilings, the spacing seems to be wide and the water level in the paddy is relatively low. This is a characteristic of SRI. Many may wonder what is SRI. It stands for System of Rice Intensification and the owner of this farm is Chen Jianhong. Now I'm trying to prevent the water from going into the field. This field basically won't lose water anymore. Chen Jianhong's field uses the SRI system, which originated from the Madagascar in the 1980s. It is based upon three main characteristics. SRI practices include more sun, more cultivation, and more organic matter. In another area, it requires less seedlings, less pesticide, less water, and less fertilizer. Among these savings, less water completely breaks the traditional practice of traditional rice cultivation. Chen Jianhong's field is much different from neighboring rice fields. This is probably just to keep water at a certain level, so it lets it flow all the time. This means that excess water has been drained. I'm not at that water level, so I cut off the water to stop it from coming in. Yes, I don't have any water draining from my field. With climate change and scarce water for agriculture, SRI is one possible solution as we travel north to look at this field. This is the apple snail. This field hasn't been weeded, so it's a better environment for them. He's a domestic farmland water conservancy expert, Gan Jun Er. From his perspective on the implementation of the water saving SRI technology for this Guangdu farmland, it's a very clear example. Look at this field. Its water level is quite in line with the spirit of our SRI principles. That is, its water level is within one to three centimeters. We can't exceed this level in Taiwan. Flooding the field at five to ten centimeters is too much, and what most fields do. Agricultural irrigation is a major consumer of water in Taiwan. It is necessary to save water by improving loss rates in ditches and avoiding water leakage. Secondly, the water conservancy means strengthen irrigation management. And third, teaching farmers about correct water, including SRI. If you are willing to accept the concept of SRI, then you will not only be able to improve your own farming methods, but also increase your production. And you can reduce the large amount of water on the ground by roughly speaking 30 to 50 percent. It is not difficult for farmers to accept new ideas and save water. People need to eat and so do crops. It is a living thing and it needs something to eat. The thing it eats is called fertilizer. There are some trace elements of fertilizer in the soil, and crops are like people, that they need digestive enzymes to transform this and absorb it. The crop also must rely on conversion by some microorganisms in the soil. They turn these large particles into small particles and allow the roots of the crop to absorb. This allows the crop to grow and produce a yield. This is the main purpose of SRI, which we explain to farmers. Microorganisms need just the right amount of water. This is something that they are teaching to farmers as water conservation is important. Chen Jianhong's SRI farm sprays probiotics and deliberately maintains a low water level as the optimal environment for crops. This allows the roots of the rice to be strong with the quality quite good. Because of concerns about environmental issues, Chen Jianhong was willing to try SRI practices. 
In fact, he only has three years of this agricultural experience. At the end of 2014 and the beginning of 2015, Taiwan's 10-year drought had caused the total area of farmland to stop irrigation, which is 44,000 hectares. This taught many to be aware of the fact that rains may be stopping. When climate change becomes a fact of daily life, how to break water dependency during periods of water shortage is quite important. It is not just a task for experts, but also something that needs to concern everyone.